You are now aware of several tools to manage rainwater and how to recycle grey water. Let us take a look at how this is implemented in practice. First, we will take a look at the Humboldt University building for physics in Adlershof. It has no rainwater sewer connection and you can find facade greening, infiltration and adiabatic air cooling with rainwater. We are here in one of five courtyards, which include all the infrastructure for on-site stormwater management. The pond has an area of 225, the courtyard 450 square meters. The moment the water level in the pond rises, the adjacent area will act as a reservoir. Here we have a storage volume of 180 cubic meters. In case of heavy rainfall, 600 cubic meters of precipitation can accumulate within three days, which can be managed on the on-site. Five cisterns are found here, which are connected with one another and fed by roof runoff. They can store a total volume of 40 cubic meters of rainwater. One of the central objectives was to save operating costs. Since no rainwater enters the sewer, this results in savings of approximately 7,000 euros per year in rainwater fees for a total roof area of 4,700 square meters. The rainwater collected from the roofs is used to irrigate the facade greenery. In this case, 450 climbing plants in plant earth. Compared to conventional sun protection, plant shading saves about 25% of the primary energy for the entire building. In winter, the plants shed their leaves and the solar radiation passes through the glass facade and warms the office rooms. Only through the evaporation process, buildings can be directly cooled. All other processes are indirect and always generate additional waste heat. Moreover, we use rainwater for adiabatic exhaust air cooling. This means that rainwater is sprayed into the exhaust air leaving the building. The cooled exhaust air then passes through a heat exchanger, which is also used for heat recovery in winter, and transfers the generated evaporative cooling to the air supply. Up to 30 degrees Celsius we don't require a backup system. We cool the incoming dry outdoor air to at least 10 Kelvin before it enters the indoor spaces. For every cubic meter of evaporated rainwater, we save about 60 euros for electricity compared to compression cooling. This is a very efficient form of building cooling. Close to the physics building, a new residential district is developing. It is not permitted to discharge surface water into the sewer system. You can see a combination of green roofs and infiltration. Polluted rainwater from much frequented roads is treated in a retention soil filter before drained into the Telto Canal. For businesses, the rainwater disposal fee and drinking water supply can be a cost factor. This hostel is collecting rainwater and uses it for flushing 40 toilets. We are standing here in the courtyard of the Pegasus Hostel, with 40 new rooms. 
The new building, completed in 2007, is equipped with a rainwater harvesting system to flush the toilets and urinals with rainwater. Maßgeblich eigentlich die Toiletten und Urinale mit Regenwasser betrieben. Der Neubau ist 2007 umgesetzt worden. Also das Regenwasser wird aufgefangen über 250 Quadrat. Rainwater from 250 square meters of flat roof enters three cisterns via downpipes. The first cistern contains a rainwater filter with a mesh size of about 0.5 mm, where the rainwater is cleaned mechanically. The overflow is led directly into the sewer. From today's perspective, one would rather try to infiltrate the overflow into the ground. Wasser auf dem Gelände im Erdreich versickern zu lassen. Ähm, dann nach diesem Regenwasser. After the rainwater filter, a calm inlet is installed, which serves to guide the oxygenated rainwater to the bottom of the cistern without stirring up sediments. It thus contributes to the microbiological purification of the rainwater. Wasser eingetragen und äh, dadurch wird es mikrobiologisch gereinigt. Der Abzug, äh, des Regenwassers findet über Clean water from the rainwater tank just below the surface is extracted with a floating device to which a screening unit is attached. This is the third purification stage. During cistern overflow, floating material such as pollen or dirt is removed from the surface via the skimmer effect. The three connected cisterns installed below the corridor area of the hostel have a storage volume of 30,000 liters. Das sind Betonsisterne, die im Flurbereich unterhalb des Hauses eingebaut sind. The rainwater control system is also located in the house and requires little space. It can be compactly installed in the basement. Expensive renting space is not required. The rainwater technology for the entire house can be accommodated in an area of one square meter. Of course, rainwater can be used on a smaller scale too like in this one family house. We decided to sustainably renovate the listed house from 1926. This included among others, a rainwater harvesting concept. Approximately 80 square meters of pitched roof area are connected to the cistern, which we are standing on right now. It was important to us that we use rainwater for garden irrigation, but also inside the house to flush the toilets. We just moved in during the winter months and currently have a high water level in the cistern. We will see what the consumption will be like in summer. So far, our experience has been very good and we are happy to show more details. We are standing here above the filled cistern. The downpipes on the left and right sides of the house are brought together here, where the runoff is fed into a rainwater filter. 
When the cistern is full, the excess water is directed into the ground via an infiltration trench and not into the sewer. Über eine Regole das Wasser ans Erdreich übergeben wird und nicht in Kanal geleitet wird. Das ist unsere Vorstellung davon, wie wir. This is our idea of how we can close the natural water cycle and replenish the aquifer, especially in urban areas where we have to deal with extreme surface sealing. It is becoming increasingly important to deal with rainwater differently. Rainwater flows into the filter seen here in form of a stainless steel basket that you can take out via this threaded rod and clean easily. Here you also find a pressure switch, which indicates the fill level of the cistern, which we will see later in the house. Moreover, the backup drinking water supply here guarantees a reliable supply when the cistern is empty. On the blue hose there is a floating device which collects the water from the surface, while the sediment settles to the bottom of the cistern. This is a rainwater control unit for single-family houses. Here you see the pump, a three-way valve, the suction pipe coming from the cistern. There is a wall duct to prevent water from entering the house. Here is an emergency overflow, such that water drains away if something goes wrong with the system. Water is supplied to the toilets or washing machine by means of a pump with an automated pressure switch. The pipe here disappears in the system. It is the mandatory backup water supply, which also ensures that there is no cross-connection between drinking water and rainwater. Deswegen, damit wir die DIN 1986 100 einhalten können, also sprich gewährleisten können, dass Trinkwasser und Regenwasser niemals in Verbindung kommen, das ist vorgeschrieben so. Und hier drin ist dann so ein Schwimmerventil. Here is a floating device which ensures the automatic backup water supply. You can see that the cistern is 80% full. Rainwater is only used when the owner is flushing the toilet. So, jetzt hat die Bauherrin gerade gespült. Now the house owner has flushed the toilet. You can hear how loud or quiet the pump is. We are now in the basement. The room is sealed, so you really don't hear anything in the house. Garden irrigation is also operated from here. In some municipalities, rainwater utilization is subsidized by not charging sewage fees for the rainwater used in the building. Unfortunately, this is still not the case in Berlin. The difference between what was used in the toilets and what was added in drinking water is what you have to pay in wastewater charges. That is the only thing. Ja, wir sind hier 
in Berlin, Reinickeshof. We are here in Reinickeshof in Berlin. A few years ago, the entire water technology was rebuilt as a part of an internal renovation. In this context, a rainwater harvesting system was realized for approximately 250 residential units. The entire buildings here are connected. The total roof area is 12,000 square meters. All rainwater is collected centrally at this point. We are standing above the cistern, which is located under this lawn with a volume of 200 cubic meters. The overflow is not discharged into the sewer, but infiltrated into a swale behind this fence. About 5% of the precipitation already evaporates on the roof. Depending on the location, the roof runoff may contain pollen and dust, which should be removed using a pre-filter. This is necessary if the rainwater is used inside the building, for example for toilet flushing or for the washing machine. The filtration is here on my left. This is a pre-filter designed as a slot screen with a correspondingly large area, because under heavy rainfall a strong current is created. Between 20,000 and 30,000 liters of rainwater are provided daily for 250 apartments. Okay, jetzt gehen wir in den Betriebsraum. Now we are in the service room. Here you see the pump unit, the backup water supply, electrical control system, water meter, backwash filter and the expansion vessel. These are the basic components that we need to operate a larger rainwater harvesting system. In a single family house, all these components are housed in a small box, no bigger than this control cabinet here. But here we need them all in the appropriate dimension. Here the drinking water flows in, while in the tank here service water is collected. The two water qualities are separated here from each other via a free outlet. In this case, no contamination of the drinking water network can take place. An important component of this system is the expansion vessel, which ensures that the switch-on frequency of the pump remains low. Rainwater is mainly used for toilet flushing. If the entire green space is irrigated with rainwater, the cistern would quickly run dry. Eventually, it doesn't matter for what you use rainwater. You will always save drinking water if you use rainwater for purposes which do not require a drinking water quality. If you walk through Berlin, you can spot many more rainwater projects, some of which are not recognizable on first sight. Let's have a quick look. The Olympic Stadium is purifying rainwater and collecting it in a 2,000 cubic meter cistern. It is used for irrigation of the lawn and surrounding green areas. In Tempelhof, you can find the malts fabric. In the past, processing malt for beer production. It is now home to offices, studios, and manufacturing industry. The retention of rainwater is managed completely on the property.
with no connection to the rainwater sewer. Green roofs and artificial lakes, of which one is for swimming, help to hold back the rainwater for evaporation and irrigation purposes. Excess rainwater is infiltrated in ditches. Since 2015, the Maltz fabric is home to the ECF farm. The farm is growing fish and basil inside the city. It is still relying on the city's drinking water, but is additionally collecting rainwater for direct use in the fish tanks. The fish excretions are then used as fertilizer for the plants. The site of the former Ufa film production facility, now Ufa Fabric, is used culturally. 4,000 square meters of green roofs are used for rainwater management, increasing the biological diversity and the quality of stay at the site. The collected rainwater is used for irrigation and toilet flushing. Excess rainwater flows into the Telto Canal, but is cleaned beforehand by a planted soil filter. The Alexa Shopping Center, right next to Alexander Plots, has green roofs for retention and evaporation and uses rainwater for cooling and as water reserve for firefighting. The Bundespresse Conference is using a green roof for retention and collecting rainwater. After purification, rainwater is used for flushing 160 toilets and urinals. The Heilig Kreuzkirche in Kreuzberg is nowadays not just a Christian church, but a social, community, and cultural center. The collected rainwater is stored, treated, and used for toilet flushing. Outside area was unsealed to enhance infiltration. At the Potsdamer Platz, the main goal was to relieve the water body Landwehr Canal in rain events. Green roofs are retaining and evaporating rainwater. Underground cisterns and an artificial water basin store water for toilet flushing and irrigation. The rainwater management completely relies on evaporation and rainwater use. Just around the corner from Potsdamer Platz, you find apartment block number six, or block six in short. Here, the rainwater from surrounding roofs is led into reed beds in the inner area. From here, it is evaporating and creating a pleasant microclimate directly in the city center. But in Block 6, it is not just about rainwater. The grey water is led into the treatment house and then used for toilet flushing of the apartment blocks. More than 30 years ago, the second pipe network was installed here in 37 residential units. Grey water was collected separately from toilet wastewater. Previously, the grey water was treated in this reed bed. The water quality was good, but the costs were too high. About 250 people are connected to the grey water recycling system. And since then they have been receiving their service water, their toilet flush water from recycled grey water. What is special about this project is that not only the low polluted grey water from bathtubs and showers is collected, but also the highly polluted water from kitchens and washing machines. This is unique in Berlin. Here in the shaft, grey water is collected and pumped into the waterhouse, where it is treated to produce high-quality service water. Coming from the shaft, grey water passes through this sieve and enters the grey water recycling plant in this quality. In the 
In tanks 1 to 10, you find very different microorganisms. You can imagine that in the first tank, there are microorganisms which break down long chains of fats. Like an elephant that can eat a whole loaf of bread at once. In the next stage, there is a goat that eats slices of bread. Then in the last stage, there are small birds that get the last crumbs out. This is how you can imagine water treatment with microorganisms. The treatment does not need any chemicals. The microorganisms sit on foam cubes and only need air, which is blown in via a compressor, which you can hear in the background. This is the final stage of the biological purification and the water is largely purified here. Now the turbidity must be removed via a sand filter and the water disinfected with UV light. This is the sand filter. Following UV disinfection, the water coming out is absolutely clean. You cannot tell it apart from drinking water. It doesn't smell either. This water is used by the 250 people for toilet flushing and to water the garden. We have also conducted comprehensive studies to produce food and breed fish using treated grey water. The earlier mentioned roof water farm is using the treated grey water for irrigation and supplying a fish tank. Plants and fish are ideal indicators of the great water quality. In a pilot project, the apartment's black water is collected and processed into a liquid fertilizer called gold water. The plant tables are flooded three times a day. We have our gold water test truck on this side. Underneath the tables is a nutrient solution tank which is fed with the fertilizer from the black water treatment, which we call gold water. This is pumped directly onto the tables. The plants absorb the nutrients through their roots. The cubes in which the plants are placed have only a holding function. The system operated with the gold water fertilizer is also compared with a conventional fertilizer system. On the other side, we use a commercial liquid NPK fertilizer. Thus, we have a direct comparison in terms of appearance, product quality and increase in biomass. The system is also used to determine pollutant residues that could accumulate in the plants. Both systems have now been running for a year, and so far we have been able to determine that there are no residues in the edible parts of the plants. We are very positive, but we still need to do more research. Thus, we need more time to place food products on the market that are harmless to the consumer and simply delicious in accordance with legal requirements. An apartment block at the Arnim Platz in Berlin Prenzlauer Berg is taking grey water recycling a step further. Not just the water is recycled and reused, but also the heat. This is the first passive house in Berlin that was built for tenants. Here, 123 tenants live in 40 residential units. There is a photovoltaic system on the roof and a combined heat and power unit in the basement. The passive house is characterized by the fact that very little heat energy is required, whereas the hot water processing consumes more energy than heating. The grey water recycling plant is installed in the basement on a floor area of approximately 9 square meters. 
together with the combined heat and power plant, which we hear now in the background. Grey water from 123 tenants comes through this blue pipe and flows into a sieve, which removes impurities such as hair or lint. The sieve is automatically backwashed, thus requiring no maintenance. In the first tank there is a pipe heat exchanger that transfers the heat from the wastewater to the buffer storage tank via this small circulating pump. In the buffer tank there is also a pipe heat exchanger that preheats the cold water, which currently flows in at 10 degrees Celsius to about 25 degrees. So the cold water no longer has to be heated from 10 degrees to 60, but only from 25 degrees to 60, which is where the energy savings are in this system. After the grey water has been slightly cooled here, it enters the multi-stage biological system. In the individual tanks there are foam cubes on which the microorganisms sit. The only thing we feed into the system is air via these small compressors, without the use of chemicals. After the water is biologically cleaned, it passes through this automatic backwashable sand filter. It then flows via the UV disinfection system into the service tank. Here it is temporarily stored before being pumped into the apartments to flush the toilets via this double pump system. Grey water is treated to such an extent that it is hygienically safe and very clean and can hardly be distinguished from drinking water in terms of quality. Here we have the control system that is connected to the Internet of Things. With this we can remotely control the plant performance from anywhere in the world where we have an Internet access. Due to this electronic control system, the whole operation requires extremely low maintenance. With this system we have an energy-positive wastewater treatment plant. We harvest 5 to 10 times more thermal energy than we feed in electrical energy into the system, including grey water treatment. The water savings amount to 1200 cubic meters per year, which approximately saves 5000 euros in water costs. The system is designed for 123 people and pays off in considerably less than 10 years. To have good payback periods, at least 50 people should be connected.